Yeah. Yeah. And um, here's what the Bible says about honoring those who are in the Lord that is over us. It says in 1 Thessalonians, it says, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge and honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard and care for you in the Lord. Hold them in highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. So, um, and Pastor Ron and Angela are our leaders, our spiritual leaders, and I would like to take time this morning to also thank them. And... Uh, our, our, all of our appreciation for all they do in this church. And a pastor, I know I've been there, you're like a doctor. You're on call 24-7. Your schedules change a lot, and you rearrange your priorities to take care of your people. And Ron does a great job at that. And I want to thank him this morning. And uh, he tries his best to get us to have a more personal relationship with Jesus. Now we know it's not about religion. <laughs> it's about a relationship. Right? <laughs> Praise God, thank you Jesus. Right? And he tries. And sometimes we are stubborn. We don't heed to his message. We don't want to change our ways. We are set like stone. And that's not how God wants us to be. And one thing I can say, and you can say it too, we hear the truth. We hear the truth. We hear the biblical truth. He tells us the truth. It's not always pretty sometimes for us to take a good look at ourselves, but he tells us the truth. And I, I thank him for that. I just thank him for constantly telling us um, the truth and how things really are. And um, I know they've had a very difficult year. They've had a very difficult year. But you know, he stands up here week after week. And he praises Jesus. And his faith is steadfast. And that is a testament. We watched that video to the man he is. And the Christian that he is, regardless of what's going on, he has he keeps he keeps his faith. And and they have been there for us through many things. And I know they have been there for me, and I know they have been here for many of you. And I just pray that we can be there for them, whatever comes their way, that we can be there and love them with the love of Christ and, and be a help for them. And I would like anybody else that they would like to say something. You're welcome. I know, like Travis said, speaking in public isn't always easy. In fact, I just read last week in an article I was reading, that's one of the biggest fears that people have, speaking in public and death. We don't have to be afraid of death as Christians, but it's hard to speak. But if anybody wants to tell Pastor Ron, thank you, now's the time. I would like to say, uh, mm -hmm. I just recently have, have been called to join the, the council and stuff like that and what Pastor Ron does in that and the way he's leading us through how to grow in our, in our walk and everything and he's just been a real influence in my life in my Christian journey and I'd just like to say thank you Pastor. Amen. Amen. And Rose and I would like to thank Ron and Angela too when they first came here he stopped up to see me and he prayed for me I was very thankful and impressed and pleased that, you know, a total stranger I was to him. He, he found out that, you know, I wasn't in the best health and they stopped up and it was very kind of them. Amen. Lord, we just come before you and with a thankful heart for Pastor Ron and Angela and Bella. Lord, we've uh, been through some things and Bella's been through some things, but we know you're still on the throne. And we know that all things work together for good. And we hear that too. To those who love you, Lord, and are called according to your purpose. So we lift up Pastor Ron and Angela and Bella. And 
and the other Angela and this and the and their son, Lord, their whole family. We just lift it up, lift them up to you, and put them in your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now I want to read Psalm 46 this morning. That's the scripture I chose, and I chose it because a couple weeks ago, if you remember, Ron was talking about shaking that goes on within us. Do you remember? And the whole time he was preaching about shaking, I was reading Psalm 46. Forgive me, Pastor Ron, forgive me, but I read this and it and it's kind of stuck with me. And this is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos. Their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of Heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come and see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. But he said, be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation and I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Blessed be the word of the Lord. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. Look beside you. You know, he's here. He's here walking among us. And he, he, is, he wants to help us. We know the world's in chaos. We know the world's in chaos. And you know what? I don't think it's going to get any better. The Bible says, you know, it, it's not going to be any better. And, and we all have shakings within our own lives. We've all had it. We all got stuff going on. We all got, there's a lot going on in all of our lives. And uh, we have, be it sickness. We've had a lot of sickness in our church lately. And we've had, uh, and grief. We, Jay, our family still struggles with, with grief and uh Financial problems. I talked to a guy that works at Long's. He said they don't hardly have the business they used to. It's just everywhere. You know, it's everywhere. And uh, so there's a lot going on. And that's what he's telling us. It's going to be chaos. Well, just, just it's going to get worse. So where, where do we find our help? Our, our refuge and strength comes from knowing the Lord. And, and, uh, and the word out there is we're in the last days. Ron tells us we're in the last days. But you know when the last days started? Do you know when they started? The day Jesus went up to heaven. From then on, it's the last days. And, and, and are we getting closer? Certainly we are. And as Ron says, uh, you know, I don't know what all has to happen yet before uh, the Lord comes back. But it's happening, according to the word, they're, they're converging on Israel. When, when that starts to happen, anything can happen. And our, our, our job is, is to be ready. And uh, so he's coming back. And I believe it's getting closer and closer and closer. And, uh, you know, you say that, and even when I was a kid in the 60s and the things were going on back then, and you think, oh, it's really bad. And he's afraid of Jesus coming back. And I'd go to bed at night, sometimes look up over the mountain. I'm still looking up over that same mountain 73 years later, thinking Jesus is going to come over that mountain. And But it's getting closer. It's getting closer. It is getting closer. And um, what's he waiting for? You know, I think sometimes, is he waiting for me? Is he waiting for me to do something? Is he, our families? We want our families to be saved. So as long as it takes him, it doesn't matter, because when he comes, he comes. It's his time. His time's not like our time. A, 
A thousand years to us is like one day to him. So we, is he slow in coming? Who knows? I, I don't know. There's a lot of things I don't know. But we do know that he's coming, and we got to be ready, and we got to be born again. We have to be that new person that Ron talk, talks about all the time. And, and as things continue to get worse, he tells us that he's our refuge and our strength. And he tells us to be still and know that he is God. And I want to tell you how hard is it to be still. I did a little experiment. I mean, I'm, I'm a hyper person. I'm a type A, whatever. I don't, uh, I don't run up escalators as I've seen some people do, but we live in a fast-paced world. We're, getting, we're, we're going nowhere fast, really. That's the truth. We're going nowhere fast. But we live in a world that, in a way, we have to keep up, but in another way, we don't have to keep up. The world is moving at so fast of a pace, and the information highway, if you want to know something, just hold your phone there and ask it. Tell you anything. <coughs> it won't tell you when Jesus is coming back. I don't think it'll tell you that, but we do live in a fast-paced world, and it's so hard for us to be still. But I'm telling you, there's a difference of being still and being still. When I go to bed at night, and I've tried this sometimes, I'll go to bed at night and I'll be laying there and I'll think, oh, I'm still, am I really still, physically still? And then I'll let out a big, and then I get still. Did you ever do that? Do you ever hold your fists like this? Notice how you hold your hands when you go to bed. Are they nice and relaxed? Or do you have a fist? I've had a fist before. You just can't, it's hard to relax. And there's a difference between being physical, physically still and spiritually still. And this still that God is talking about here, he's saying, be still and know that I am God. And that's the inside being still. Being still doesn't mean sitting in the recliner doing nothing. Because you can be sitting in the recliner doing nothing and be at turmoil inside your heart in your mind you aren't still this stillness that God's talking about takes some work there are two things that I can think about that I work on with myself to try to achieve that stillness because it's not easy it's not easy in the world we live in because we have to we live in this world so the, the one of the things that I think is important to try to achieve that stillness that he is talking about is to change the way we think. We got to renew our minds. We got to renew our minds. And one of the things that we have to renew our minds about is get your mind off of yourself get your mind off of yourself because that's where that's where we fall because all we think about is us <clears throat> Jesus never thought much about himself he was too busy taking care of everybody else we have to change the way we think we have to uh, start to think about the things that we're told to think about it's not about us. And the sooner you learn that, the better off you'll be. And I can't, I can't tell you to do it because only the Holy Spirit can work that in you. Life is not about you. It is about Jesus and others. If you want to be happy, give your life to someone else. Do something. Make somebody else's life better. Right? That's the truth. I heard Joyce Meyer, I've heard her say that many a time. It's not about me, it's not about me, it's not about me. It's about somebody else. It is. And we have we are so selfish and self-centered. And, and, and we think more like the world than we do than we think like Jesus. It is. Well, here are a couple examples of what the Bible says about that. It says. For I say, through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think so much of themselves, but to think soberly. He says, if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, 
He deceives himself. If anyone thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing of what he ought to know. I mean, that's the they're biblical. That's the truth. As Ron, Ron preaches the truth. That's what it says. And uh, after we get our mind off ourselves and get it on someone else, and we often think, you know, we forget stuff, and we do, I, I know I forget stuff and stuff, and most of the time it's because I'm thinking about what I got to do for me. You know, it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a process. I'm telling you, it, and it's not easy, but we have to get our mind off ourselves. And, and some of the thinking patterns that we have, we always think the worst. I know Jody, you know, I, me and Jody go around and around about this. We, we, we think the worst. She always tells me, oh, mom, it'll be okay. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay. <laughs> and she does, and it is. So, you know, to waste a lot of time worrying about stuff that never happens, and, you know, and it's just how we are. It's the flesh in us that we have to kill to get this, be still in our spirits. And to figure out what is important in this life. It's our pattern of thinking. We have to work on it. And sometimes we just hold on to stuff. We can't let it go. Minor stuff that don't mean a hill of beans. That's right. Jay said to me before, just let it go. Let it go. i got to tell you a story. I read a devotional the other day that said about uh, uh, letting go. It said letting go. Uh, Joe had a zip line down there for the boys from tree to tree, and I'm not sure if there was a mattress at the one end or not. What? No, there wasn't a mattress at the one end. And Ben had a party, and he had invited these girls, and it was Lily Miller, I'll never forget it. She was going to go, she was on that zip line, she was going to try out that zip line, where she started from the top and went to the bottom, lickety split, and she, we kept hollering, let go, let go, let go. Well, she didn't let go, and she crashed. And she was skinned from head to toe. Remember that? We got to let go or we're going to crash. Or we are going to crash. If we can't let go and let God and trust him enough in that, we got to think different. We live in an area, and I'm going to say this, I think we live in an area that has like a, a negative attitude. I, I really do. I, I think we live in an area that we're more negative than positive. And we have to fight to get above that. We have to fight to get above that negative attitude. So the scripture tells us to think on these things. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, whatever is excellent or praiseworthy. Think about these things. Put them other thoughts out of your head. And then there's one other area in our lives that I think we, if we want that, be still. And that is to know Jesus. You gotta know Jesus. You gotta know how much he loves you. You gotta know that you're a sinner. You're not good. There's nobody here good. There's no good in us, only the good that he puts in us. We're not good people. That's not going to matter come that day. That's right. If you're good. You've got to know Jesus. And how do you get to know Jesus? You've got to read the Gospels. And I do this over and over. Read the Gospels. See what Jesus did. Jesus never thought about himself. He was busy taking care of people. And he got close to the Father's. If you don't know Jesus, you're not going to find that peace. And one of these days, when we face him, he's, you know, I don't know. What if you don't know him? He'll say, I don't know you. That's the scariest verse in the Bible to me ever. I don't know you. I don't know you. You've got to learn to, you've got to learn about him. If you want a close relationship with anybody, you got to put the time in. Amen. you got to put the time in. I don't care if it's people or the Lord. you got to put the time in. Make it a priority. Make it important to learn who Jesus is. Because some of us may only know Jesus through what somebody else tells us. And that ain't going to work. That's not going to work. You gotta know him. 
you got to experience that love that he has for you. And only when you do that, then you can share that love. You can share that love. I ran across this thing. It said an ounce of heart knowledge is worth a ton of head knowledge. It is. <clears throat> and he invites us all to draw close. Draw close to me and I'll draw close to you. That's what he says. Draw close to me and I'll draw close to you. So I would, um, in closing here this morning, I just want to say if, if uh, and I, <laughs> I'm not up here saying I know that, peace be still, and know that I'm God. I, I'm not there 90% of the time. But I know it's available. Mm -hmm. And I know what I got to do. It's not all about what somebody else does. Is what I have to do to try to get that relationship that I can set in my recliner and be still physically and spiritually and trust that God's got my back. And we all need to be there. Last week, Pastor Ron talked about heaven, what we have awaiting for us. If that's not a motivation to get to know Jesus, I don't, I don't know what is. And as we hear from Pastor Ron week after week, and I, I praise him for it. He has a heart for the lost. He doesn't want anyone yes. to go to hell. He doesn't. And um, when, when it comes to the bottom line, there's nothing more important on this earth that you can do But to accept Jesus as your Savior, because in the end, in the end, whether it's the end of time or your, your death, that's the only thing that's going to matter. Amen. It's the only thing that's going to matter. So, as we close here today, I want to, the altar's open, as one Pastor Ron says. I, I, I don't consider myself an evangelist, but the altar's open. Don't, don't go out of here if, if you want to accept the Lord as your Savior. And, um, like I said, that's the most important thing we can do on this earth. And I just pray that uh, we all grow closer to Jesus and knowing and that we start to try to change the way we process things <laughs> in this world. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for being here among us this morning. We thank you for every person here today. And I just pray that they would desire a closer relationship with you, Lord. That they would want to know you and, and want to try to, to have that stillness that you offer to us. And Lord, we just uh, thank you for our pastor. We thank you for all the folks in the church here that do the Lord's work. He, he's, the, he's the leader, but there's a lot of folks here that... Are, are also our fellow workers with the Lord, and I pray that they're blessed today as well. And it takes a lot to keep a church going, Lord. And we just thank you for all those folks uh, that lend a hand and, and know that they are called to do the work of the Lord. And we just thank you for everyone here today. We praise you and honor you today and worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen.